Hi, welcome back. So this week you're looking at magnetic fields and the slinky coil. So the learning outcomes for this lab will be to measure magnetic fields, um, understanding the magnetic fields inside a solenoid, and how to experimentally obtain a value for the permeability of free space using a solenoid. So part one, you will just be measuring the uh, magnetic field of Earth in the lab. I'll shortly show you how you do this in the lab. And part two, you'll be producing a magnetic field inside the solenoid to experimentally obtain the value of mu naught, which is your permeability of free space. So if your equation for the solenoid is B equals mu naught and I, where N is the number of turns per unit length, then if you change the current and measure the magnetic field for different values of this current, then you can again do a plot and obtain mu naught from your slope. So the V equals IR is important here because um, to change our current, we have a variable resistor and a constant voltage source. So if our voltage is constant and we're varying resistance, then the only thing that's changing is the current. And that's how we're getting a changing value of B for changing values of I. Okay, so for the first part of this experiment, you'll be measuring the magnetic field of Earth within the lab room. So all you need in terms of equipment is the magnetic field probe which plugs into the lab quest which goes into the computer. So just make sure you open up the slinky lab in the computer, in the fundamentals folder, and you're ready to go. Okay, so when you're ready to measure, all you need to do is rotate the magnetic probe facing this direction until you find the maximum reading that's displayed by the computer. So the maximum here means the most positive value rather than the absolute value. So we can see the maximum value is around here. So once you've got that, you want to rotate the probe in an angle with the table and then until you find your maximum in that direction. So it's somewhere around here and then you'll record that value. Now for the second part of this is you'll be trying to do the same measurement but in terms of horizontal and vertical components of magnetic fields and also taking into account your zero error because this isn't exactly correct because the magnetic field probes haven't been uh, calibrated. So just make note when you're measuring the horizontal component, your probe will be orientated like this. So your probe is measuring anything that's coming into this face. So this is horizontal and this is your vertical direction. And just make sure when you're measuring your horizontal one that you just, you don't want it in any random orientation. You want it where you find the maximum value and then rotate it 180 degrees from that point. So if your maximum is here, then the other direction will be just like this, 180 degrees from that initial point. Okay, so once you finish the first part, you can move on to the second, which is the slinky coil. I'll show you the components that you're using. So this is your switch. Um, you've got a weight, which is to hold down the slinky on one side. Uh, the slinky itself, you've got your power supply, and this is your rheostat, which allows you to adjust the resistance. So it's basically a variable resistor, which allows you to effectively change the current that you're inputting into your circuit. And lastly, your, uh, not lastly, but your alligator clips to connect to your slinky coil and also, of course, your multimeter. Okay, so once you've got your circuit set up, it should look something like this. You've got your slinky connected to your power, which is then going through your switch to the rheostat. This top bit here adjusts the amount of resistance. Um, and then this is coming out into your multimeter. Make sure you've got it on the settings for current and measuring amps. And then which is then going back through the slinky. So um, when you're ready, you turn your power source on. And this switch, it's permanently in the open position until you're holding it down. So um, when you're ready, you can hold it and read the current coming out. For the first part, you want two amps. So you slide this um, part on the rheostat until you reach the two amps that you want. Okay. And then, so when you're not in need of it, don't hold it down because it just heats up the slinky for no reason. Okay, so when you've got everything set up, um, you put your magnetic probe into the solenoid, uh, the slinky, which is a solenoid. So hold the button down and you can see on the screen you've got a value for the magnetic field. So finally, when you get up to the part when you want to measure the magnetic field for a change in current, 
just um, again remember that you adjust the current with the rheostat so slide it to the appropriate point in which you get the values that you need. Okay, just one thing to uh, double check is to make sure that you're plugged into the correct ports on the rheostat, uh, which is this top one and the bottom one down here, or this top one and the bottom one down here. You can't have the ports both plugged into the bottom one because the way it works is you're sending a current through the top rod, which is then going down this bar and then goes around the coils to make it through the other one. So if you have them both plugged down here, then it's just going straight around the coil and so moving this around won't actually change anything. Okay, so a few things to look out for in this lab. Um, make sure that your horizontal and vertical magnetic field is orientated in the right direction. I briefly touched on this in the lab, so just make sure you understand it. Um, two, check where you're plugged into the rheostat. Again, I pointed this out, but this is important. A lot of people get it wrong. Um, three, Take care with your slinky measurements. Uh, make sure you're consistently measuring it from the same point because the magnetic field can vary a bit uh, within the slinky coil, as you'll see in the experiment. And lastly, be aware of your different units. So there's an M that can stand for milli or meters. So make sure you're aware of your units and know whether you've got milli teslas, milli tesla meters, or tesla meters. And that's it for this lab, so enjoy.